suspect lots of people looking at the video, the videos will sit there and go, God, you know what? I'd really like him as a boss. Well, the, the, the case study collection has come as a result of, I guess, the, the case studies that I developed during the pandemic. Um, because one of the things that struck me as we talked about structural breaks was that a, a lot of organisations and a, a lot of individuals have been impacted by the, the, the pandemic. And as we move out of that into, I guess, what, what the people at publicists uh, call the next normal rather than the new normal, um, you've got a, a real change going on in terms of people's business models, in terms of uh, the way of doing business, and there have been winners and losers. Um, and, and this was something that, that really struck me. I, I didn't want to be sat there in, in class like some of the, the people who taught me uh, or who I experienced teaching with after the financial crisis, you know, 2007, 2008, where they were teaching stuff and students were looking at it and going, this is irrelevant. We had this financial crisis and, and you're not kind of addressing it in the class. So from that point of view, um, developing a, a set of um, case studies that actually were current, that, that had an opportunity not just to discuss the pandemic, but to discuss a whole range of other issues that were sitting alongside the pandemic. And I'll give you an example. One of the case studies was about one of the winners in, in the pandemic, Hornby, who, who make model railways and, and all sorts of other models and toys. And uh, uh, although actually they're, they're more of a collectibles company than a toy company. And they saw a huge growth because people didn't have a lot to do during the pandemic. And they kind of, you know, there, there was a certain comfort for middle-aged men in, in, in nostalgia going out and buying a train set and playing with that or scale electrics with, with, their, with their, their children. Uh, I guess as part of the homeschooling um, and however it wasn't plain sailing for them um, they had Brexit to contend with as that went through they also had things like the the crisis with shipping containers because a lot of their uh, manufacturing was outsourced in, in Asia India so they couldn't fulfill a lot of the orders they had this big boom in orders and they were struggling to fulfill that, those orders in some cases that, that they were having to be very agile in, in the way they operated. Um, so you had all of that sort of element going on. Um, you had other businesses like Novo Nordisk that were, I suppose, almost pandemic proof because they're producing, they're the world's largest producer of insulin. Um, and obviously diabetics need their insulin, whatever. So there were challenges to overcome, but it wasn't a question of supply and demand necessarily. So there's a different element to look at there. Um, one of the other winners was, was uh, the music streaming site Spotify. Um, uh, you'll probably remember um, that the 2013 edition of, of, of the textbook had a, a small end of chapter case on Spotify. Um, I've continued to use the, the, the case, but what I do is I update them every year or every couple of years as, as the, the situation changes. And it was kind of great to see that, uh, again, people were making more use of Spotify. Um, and then we kind of saw that there was a, if you like, a pandemic boost, but then things start to tail off as people go back to work. And now we're seeing the, 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 you know, the cost of living crisis. Um, news that's coming out now is that people are cutting down on subscriptions. So uh, again, you know, supplementary elements to think about how that happens, uh, how that changes the, how that changes the situation. Uh, most of the reason for choosing the cases um, was really that they were good stories, and I think that's a. a a very important element with it with a case study you want it to be a good story um, something that that people will engage with and in particular i, I think where students can identify with the the, the, the company in some way um, whatever that happens to be however they um, see it as identifying perhaps they're consumers um, I, I certainly know that that you know spotify we can have good conversations in class, even those who have perhaps only scan read the case 
can talk about the music business because they're, they experience it as consumers. Um, we also had um, a perfumery um, and, and, and um, health and beauty company, which is Shishado. Um, I particularly like that company because it, um, it gave a, a good insight into how um, some of the Asian companies are very, very different, uh, have a very different philosophy to European companies in the same sector. Uh, and, and certainly, um, I, I know at Exeter, we, we do have quite a lot of Asian students uh, on our master's programmes. Uh, and it helps to have to talk about brands that those students are familiar with. So we, we, we also wanted to make uh, a good mix of, of um, uh, a good mix of, of, of cases. Um, I also included one on, on Newcastle United, um, the, the, the takeover, which involved a, a certain Middle Eastern, uh, uh, a certain Middle Eastern regime um, or their, their crown sovereign wealth fund. Uh, and there were all sorts of issues about that, around ethics, around um, sports washing. Um, so, uh, again, it's a good story, but also it allows students and, and professors to have discussions uh, around wider topics. So case studies, yes, you can look at it purely as a business problem, but very often the case studies I write, I like to be thinking about a, a, a sort of a bigger issue that the case study is an example of uh, and whether that's sort of you know ethical behavior um, whether that's technology change um, whether that's you know uh, business agility having that that kind of wider view of the world having those those wider ideas is, is, a, is a really important element now um what we've done with with the cases obviously is we they as you know they've been packaged up as a sort of a separate um supplement with with all the cases from from the other from the the previous book so you you don't lose the the, the old favorites if you, if you want to go back to a core or tesco or or waterstones or, or some of those that appeared in previous editions then they're all there but the new case collection means that you can sort of say well okay um I don't have time to update this particular case or, or to signpost materials which will update it um i can i can use something which is which is pretty current it's got a current issue attached to it uh, and and as you'll know we've produced pretty comprehensive teaching notes for, for those there's also um mcq questions uh banks of questions that students can can access um and you can set those as as um pre-reading or you can just use them as an exercise for students to self-study um, the teaching notes have a, a lot of other resources attached so that you can use those and, and they're just resources I use myself um, you know whether it's a, a BBC report or, or a newspaper article or even in Hornby's case a, a, a link to um, a link to um, the the UK TV channel that, that has been running it's a 10 part you wouldn't believe it there's a 10 part series on Hornby called Hornby a model world 10 hours of inside track on what Hornby does um so if, if you use that as, as your case study you just <laughs> you know the students have got loads and loads of background um so yeah there's lots and lots of um uh, lots and lots of materials that, that we've linked to that and then of course as i mentioned we've got the two videos um gina head talking about galaxy the, the relaunch of, of the galaxy brand uh, including that mars's first move into vegan chocolate believe it or not so there's some really interesting stuff around there uh, and how they've been i guess responding to the likes of divine and tony's chocolate only in in uh, trying to make their supply chain more ethical so there's kind of interesting elements there and and this really kind of heartwarming story about um neil seba's um company tossed uh, about this great idea for, for healthy eating that really um i guess the pandemic had done for um and it's risen phoenix like from the ashes to to, to kind of come back and and you know neil's faith and enthusiasm for for the whole project comes across in in the video he's um uh, I suspect lots of people looking at the video, the videos will sit there and go, God, you know what? I'd really like him as a boss. Um, you know, he's, he's good. He's very open and he tells it like it is, you know, there's, there's some kind of great stuff there. 
Um, so, so yeah, we've we've actually pulled together um, what I think are some really interesting resources, and um, they're, they're resources I developed for my own classroom use. Um, so I know they work in the class, and I know students like them. Um, I, I actually, you know, uh, the modules I've used them with have have had some of the highest student satisfaction ratings that, that I've had in, in the last ten years. So. Um, if that's an endorsement for, for the materials, then then you couldn't get much better than that. And um, yeah, from, from that point of view, I'm, I'm really looking forward to using the, the, the videos, which I haven't used in class yet. Um, and, and as I said, we'll see how they go.